sofa6.co.uk Sponsors of The Haze Out. And it's a thir- Just a minute. No, it ain't. Not Thursday. It's not Thursday. It's a Monday night. It's nine o'clock and I'm Gary... No. I'm not Mark. No, no. What's happened, Chris? <laughs> what's happened? What's happened? The most horrific thing in the world is what's happened. A bloody big tree fell on Gary Dibley's shed. Zoomf. Just like it that. Had the audacity, followed by, followed by the next door neighbour's garage roof. That as well. That as well. well. Oh no! Oh yeah. That's oh, yeah. terrible. <laughs> so, what's happened? What's happened is as follows: we've changed the schedule around because Gary is out of action for a wee while. Time as yet indeterminate or undetermined, or we don't know for how long. Oh, Pardon? Oh, it's just me mumbling in the background. Carry on. Carry on. The Hears Hour, the Hears Hour, has moved to Monday night, where it started. It used to be on on a Monday night from day one. Well, actually, it was day two. We are on on a Monday night. Tuesday night will remain as it ever was. Wednesday night will be Team Talk. That's what it'll be. And then Thursday night is VT Talk. So my two shows, the two shows what I do, has moved about a little bit. VT Talk Thursday, here's our to Monday. So it's here's our tonight. That's where it is. Did I get that right, Chris? You did. So for tonight, there's no Keith. He generally speaking can't make Mondays, but he will be making Thursday for VT Talk. Um, and I can't wait for that because he's a political animal. Um, has, I mean, he and I have been sat on opposite ends of the political spectrum for as long as I've known him. I've known him since 1990. We like that. And we'll have some good ding back and bangs, but we agree on this one. So it'll, it'll be good fun. I'm looking forward to Thursday um, and that'll be, that'll be cracking. But I'm also looking forward to tonight. And I should say, on behalf of everybody here on the Here's Hour, Happy New Year to each and every one of you. And may I wish you everything you could wish for yourself that's may all your dreams come true this year indeed and may you live as long as you want to and want to as long as you live <laughs> there you go cheers to you good health happy 2014 many more of them let's hope this is how we in fact no let's make it that this is how we are Everybody take hang on, a drink. Hang on. What? Get, me a drink. get your drink. Get your drink. Got me drink. Cheers everybody. Good health to you all. Good health. So I thought mm. with it being the new year, I thought I might have a bit trawl back through the archives a bit. And just for entertainment purposes. And we've got a little a new little slot that we're putting in. Chris and I were talking about this the other day. And originally a letter was changed, but we've decided to call it Twit of the Week, haven't we? <laughs> that, wasn't, yeah, indeed. that wasn't what Chris, Chris originally said. No, Twit. Oh. Twit of the Week. And, and we'll be looking at that in the second or third half. And it's all to do with Twitter and things on Twitter that have made us go, <laughs> or... <laughs> One or the other. Um, we probably ought to play the titles in, all things considered. Because idea. this is the Monday night. Here's our.
say new titles for the new year i thought i'd change things around a little bit but e it was funny last year wasn't it in many ways the, the haze hour has seen people come and go and has seen some outtakes come and go as well we've had our our occurrences of things go wrong haven't we <laughs> just once or twice i i compiled this video of things that have gone wrong but first, the first two clips in this feature Daz, VTTV Daz, DJ Bobo, the man spinning the wheels of steel on a Thursday night on RY4 Radio. And he used to do the hairs out with us, didn't he? He did. Daz did. Um, right. I want you to... First, first two clips have got Daz in. But the second clip, I want you to watch Sav's face. It'll be about about here on the picture just watch Sav's face when Bob says he's going to do the strip just it's it's classic hey, hey enjoy, enjoy. I'll, I'll be wetting myself laughing enjoy that in years to come I didn't see how many years and I couldn't see how many years but to see um, like a packet of six and an electronic version run parallel you're doing it again aren't you I'm sure you're doing this deliberately <laughs> <laughs> it's always when Daz is talking. It's only when he's on. Are you finished with the buttons? Yes. <laughs> Carry on. Will there be strippers? No, they're not. I'm not coming. <laughs> for you. Only in private, Bob. What? Who are you offering um, that to, Bob? Both of you. Oh God. <laughs> 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 Anything at this point. I didn't know anything about no, this either, Sav. I'm just as shocked as you are. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm <laughs> it's going to have one of two effects. If Bob's going to be doing a strip, either everybody's going to turn up or nobody will yeah, turn up. Yeah, well, that's it. I'll oh, be looking it. forward to seeing that thread on the forum later. Oh, my God. I'm going to blast it 3.7. I'm going to keep on cranking it up. See where it goes. You find the button all right? Always good, I think. I'm not doing it for you. No. Oh no. Why would that be? Well, it was switched off. You press the wrong button. <laughs> <laughs> Which button did I press? You pressed the little red one. Hang no, on. it, no, no, I was no. pressing the other. That's that's the switchy off button there. And it was switched off because I've just pressed it. Oh well. And here we are. Here we are. Amanda right. holding notwithstanding. <laughs> We're not going to go on about her, are we? No, I don't think so. No. We just did. Yeah. Yes. 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 If people were watching yes. on 720 or 480, they'll have heard all of that. Right. Bin right. bags. Talented lady. Yes. Gaffer tape. Yes. Do you do realise there are men up and down the country sitting panting now at the very idea of Amanda holding bin bags and gaffer tape? No, I hadn't realised. Oh, that. it's many man's dream, that I'm sure. Not mine, I hear. No. no, no, definitely not. Cheryl Cole, bin bags and gaffer tape. Right. We better get to the subject matter, don't you think? I don't know. I'm quite happy uh, oh, with Cheryl that. Cole, bin bags and gaffer tape. <laughs> if I'm to be honest. <laughs> yes. No, you're probably right. We should probably I talk about electronic cigarettes. I think so. Yes. And uh, they're up the tank and throat hit and bite extra yes. and oxidised juice holidays podcasts and Bob's basics because that's everything that's on that list well, it's over there. It's not often you reveal the agenda. Pardon? It's not often you reveal the agenda. It's called a tease. All oh, right. So I'm teasing. To do, to do, to do. Just a little tease. And then you play the titles in. Right. You Your favourite part. Then. Yes. The bit you really like. Yes. Are you ready to... Are your plugs ready? Yes. You're not going to wig out? No, no, no. Sometimes I'll, you, I'll, you I'll do. I'll sit through it. You disappoint me. One, two. One, two. Pa, pa, tock, tock. One, two, three. Hello, good evening, and welcome to Vaportrails.tv. This is the Haze Hour. Yeah. <laughs> hey, we've got another packed show for you tonight. I don't even know if I'm going to be able to cram everything in. 
All right. As the bishop said to the actress. <laughs> <laughs> There's all kinds. There's a hint. All sorts. Yes. We've, we've billed it as because of a trip to Ireland and then there's a whole load of things following on from that. Oh, yes, your Irish experience. That's, oh, yes. Yes, yes. It was brilliant. Brilliant. But I'll tell you about that after the title, shall I? Yes. Now, can Look you remember what I showed that. you last week? Oh, I'm not doing that. <laughs> <coughs> we'll be back after the title. What? I'm not... Well, just bang your head then. Well, I can't, I'm, I'm clutching. Oh, you've got the, a you're clutching your doodah. Uh, yes. Just in case the capiffy drops off. Yes. Yes. Just and, to and, prevent any buzz. And you've got a bad back as well, haven't you? It's a lot better now since I took a tablet. Oh, what's that? A tablet? Can't remember. Galaxy Nexus Seven. That's what 7? I was given. All oh, right, it's one of those, is it? It is. <laughs> we'll play the titles because it's about ace exists. It is. It yes, is. Here we tablets. go. And um, and we'll have a blast at that. But we'll have a blast after the titles now. I've managed to put Rachmaninoff's ninth on the titles for you tonight. Did he write a ninth? Damn. That was his unfinished series. <laughs> <laughs> I just wish the viewers could see you when that's being played. You'd think you were having some sort of, you know, fit. I am uh, fit. No, fit. Oh, you mean a seizure? Yes, a seizure. Seizure later. No, I, I, you know, I mean, if if you like that kind of music, you like that kind of music. And I like that kind of music. I don't like Marmite, I don't like menthol, and I do like a bit of... <laughs> a bit of that. Well, we've all got different tastes. Indeed, we each have our cross to bear. Are you ready for this experiment, anyway? I am, yes. We had... Can't uh, wait. It, it came up. Um, there you go. On Skype, it says, could you try something for me? It says, while inhaling, once in the mouth, don't take it down into your lungs, but blow it out your nostrils. He wants to see if others get the same effect as he got, and the, the hit literally knocked him back. That's what it says. Right. And that, the timestamp on that is 2039. Look, see, just up. Up above me, yeah. just up there. Yeah. It's 2039. That was when it came in tonight. So the idea is you suck it in, but you don't breathe it down, and then you blow it out your nose. Right. So if you're watching this live, give it a go. If you're watching on video on demand, give it a go, and give it a. Bl apparently, this is supposed to. It doesn't give you throat hit. Apparently, it's supposed to give you nose hit. I thought you were going to say that. Yes, nose hit. Nose hit. Are we ready? Right. On three. Four. <laughs> I breathed in. It's not easy to do, is it? Oh yeah, that got it. Just, just at the bottom of your nostril, like back a bit, above your sinuses. Ah, a little bit, yes. Try it again. It does as well. Nose hit, as opposed to nose throat hit. hit. <laughs> does it tickle you a bit? It does, it tickles. Well, that's that, that same that tickle that you're getting on the nose, that's the tickle I look for on my throat. Right. Mm. Getting your tonsils tickled. Well, I tickled. never look for that. Do you not? Hang on. I'll try it with something that's got some... Uh, oh, yes. Uh -huh. Thrutch is what yes. it's called. Genesis atomizer. Milk. It's a um, yes, an NGP Genesis atomizer. Go on then. So, <laughs> that's better than a ticket. Uh, no, 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 no. <laughs> that's something new. Yeah, I hadn't thought of that. And there it is. Thank you very much. There you go. Blast from the past that was. And no, I wasn't going to play in the uh, the Halloween juices. Just no. No, 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 no. But have you all tried a nose hit? That's, that was just reading chat while that was on. Have you all done it? Have you tried it? Yeah. I want everybody, I, I, know, I, I, want, I want everybody in chat to have a go. If you, if you knew, 
I want you to have a blast. And you, all you do is suck it in as you would, but instead of breathing it down, push your tongue up and blow it out your nose. That's all you do. There you go. Very pleasant. Ah. Actually, it increases the flavour as well. It does. And it gives you a tons tickle. Tons it tickle. does, and it may make you sneeze later, but... Oh, yeah, it'll definitely do that. It clears your sinuses out. Indeed it does. There you go. Oh, <laughs> this good this. <laughs> he just did it and had an escape. <laughs> <laughs> Very boring, says it's lovely with liquids with maple in them. Great. Oh, sod off with your menthol, Jeff. I wouldn't do it with menthol. No. Nelly Scroggett says it decreases the flavour for her. Stick the drip tip up your nose and breathe out through your mouth. Not that I have just tried, says 19Silent79. Yeah, there you go. No. Joseph says tissue required. Miles Dolphin says my eyes are watering from the menthol. Uh, Heiko says he's he's using it with a strong menthol. Um, and old get wants to kick up the the backside. What is he? Oh, the nasal inhale thing. Nasal inhale. Does he realise you've got to put that drip tip in your mouth after that? Well, yeah, but they are bogies. Oh. Did I just say that out loud? You did. Oh. Shirt sleeve required. Yes. Aye. Wrong idea of nose hit. Open your sinuses if you use menthol. Try Menth fire and ice. Get some salves fire and ice. <laughs> That'll be cracking. Or use the wife's mod, as Midge Dog says. Or use a buggy drip tip. <laughs> Bush, spell this book. <clears throat> yes, very funny. <laughs> Mr. Scott Gregory's having a sneezing fit. Lena Marie Popper Torson's been very ladylike. I think that's good. And Daz VTT V has said, I think I've just set me called off again. Well, we did warn them. We did, I. And no, oh, God. Right, can you ban all git, please? Aye. Try Diablo Loco, you yeah. swine. He's, a, he's an absolute word beginning with B, isn't he? He is, absolutely. A bath plug. Is that the word you think? Bath plug. Bath plug. <laughs> Which actually makes me think of me Twitter of the week. Right, there's been a few bad plugs on there. Oh, I'm, I'm going to do my Twitter of the week now. I'm, I'm not going to show you the picture of this fella at all. Have you got one ready? No, no. Just, you carry on doing your bit. You know me, I'll just... This this guy, this guy is called Roger Bezanis. B-E-Z-A-N-I-S. I might have replied to him during the course of yesterday. It turns out... He's a Scientologist. Now, I'm not one for religious intolerance aimed at any one given religion. I just don't like any of them, is the easiest way to put it, being an atheist as I am. But this bloke is a Scientologist, and apparently, apparently, he's a big fan of raw vegetables. So I called him Carrot Boy, which is about right. And he reckons any toxins at all you want shot off. So I'm assuming he doesn't eat peppers, or tomatoes, or aubergines, or potatoes, or drink tea, or coffee. Or water. Or, or water, exactly right, because there's toxins in water. Um, he probably doesn't breathe either, because all toxins are bad for you. I try to find some of his idiotic tweets. Um, when one is fully detoxed and their body is reacting fully in real time, we feel what it takes to be affected. It takes but a touch. He says, Toxi Toxicity literally takes a nudge, not a bullet to the head, as many think. It is a fraction of a chemical that the body reacts to. I'm telling you something, Sunshine. You must have had, Mr. Roger Bazanus, a fraction, more than a fraction, as in the full chemical, when you were a kid. Because apparently, you've got a fraction of a brain. So that is at Roger Bazanus. <laughs> Is what it says on here on Twitter. If you want some fun, pile on the bugger and let him know that he is the twit of the week. <laughs> I'll have to do a sting for that. 
Twitter of the week. Heiko has said he really does talk an incredible amount of... I'm counting the number of stars. I think he means bollocks. A lot of twit. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> so there you go. Um, there's a prize for the first one to get blocked publicly by Roger Bazanis. Have a blast at him. I'm not going to tell you what the prize is. It could be 54 milligram caramel lychee. Somebody was asking us how to make that, you know. Were they? Aye. Asked us what the recipe was. Do you know what? I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm making, I'm making the show up on the fly, right? And I've decided we're going to have another segment, Chris. What do you think of this? Challenge Dave. Oh my God. Right? Nothing stupid. Challenge Dave and Dave will do it live. There okay, you go. Okay, here's your first challenge. You what? can um, go on the adverts. do your version <laughs> of the new e advert. I'm not sure what company it's for because I can't remember them. Enjoy. Uh-huh. Or you Where want me to run naked the, across the football pitch? The streak. <sighs> I like that one. Ah, Chris. <laughs> Honestly, you bloody murder you are, huh? Why do you come up with these things? Sofa6.co.uk Sponsors of The Haze Out. And we're back in the room, and by God, it was cold out there, Chris. Aye. I did a what quick. What were you doing outside, like? Well, you wanted us to run over the football field, so I ran over the lawn. You, did you take your camera? No. Was I supposed to? You were supposed to. What use is an advert if you can't play it out? Oh, I'm sorry. Fair enough. Ah, do apologise. No, Lena Marie Popper Torsten has said, just scared the neighbours. No, <laughs> Keith and Vicky were already out. What can I tell you? Dave, I found a tweet I didn't answer. Go on then. I, I really need to get to learn how to use Twitter, you know? Y you read it and then type the answer in. I know, but people answer and there are different sections and that's... Uh, oh, I find it a bit confusing. But my favourite person on Twitter, as you well know, I have two of them. Simon Chapman and Martin McKee. I love them. Oh, nigga nug. I love them. Statler and Waldorf. I'd be sending them Christmas cards this year. Oh, I'd be sending them something, but it wouldn't be a Christmas card. <laughs> um, he, he's, 
he's tweeted here at me that um, when I questioned him about his studies, that's what cohort studies do, follow people and ask them questions. No studies so far show superiority in quitting. All I can think is that they're asking the wrong people. Yeah. Do you think? Um, I do, actually, when I sit and think about it. I mean, they're just not talking to the right folks at all. Not at all. <sighs> I'll try and put them I'll right. Try and I'll put try and put them right. right. I'll follow you up on that later on after the show. There's all kinds of suggestions that's been coming up in chat, you know. Are there? Are there? Yes. I wasn't thinking of tonight. I know what I'm doing tonight, basically. I was thinking for next week. Because we've what had... We going, what, we're, not going we're not going to follow the inverted belly button thing, button thing that they're all I'm on sorry? about. <laughs> <laughs> In it's the Lenny Marie it's Poppet Lenny Marie Horsen. Poppet you know what, Horsen. You know what Well, I do, like. but what's she come up with, like? Well, I don't well, know where the belly, button's, where the got belly button's got but brought in, in but it's all in there. But never mind. But never mind. Inverted belly, Inverted button, belly button, 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 button style streaking. Oh, I'm that's because that's it's, 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 it's a cold them. night. Ah. And somebody had already tweeted earlier on today that the shortest male member ever recorded in an adult was one centimetre and I'd paid them 150 quid not to tell anybody. Uh, uh, <laughs> yes. There were, somebody did mention something about the, uh, are we getting echo? I'm echoing, am I? I'm echoing, am I? I don't know because I can't, I hear, don't know, myself, I can't hear myself, Lenny. Cat's echoing. Hang on. Ah. No, me parrots are quiet. No, it's me. It's my problem. I've got, I've got you coming in twice. Ah. Has that sorted it out? I'm all right now. Is it sorted, people? I'm fixed. Fixed female echo only. Moonlit? Yes. What? 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 What's Moonlit said? Saying I'm fixed. All right. I'm beat the vets. That's a horrible thought, that. Somebody was uh, mentioning earlier on um, about the, the crap about getting a juice in the mouth. Mm. Um, let me just show everybody something. I might as well do this. Um, you will see, and I'm doing this with... Can everybody see what that is? I don't know if I need to screw in a little bit more. I shall... I shall It's 24 milligram RY4. Everybody can see that? Oh, you've got me main screen. Oh, that wouldn't help. I'll do that again. Do apologise, because I wasn't looking at the right monitor, was I? There you are, 24 milligram, 2.4%. All right, RY4, that's what it is. Just so everybody knows, and I don't cheat. Because I hear a lot about this, that you know, if you get a, you get a drop of um, a drop of a juice in your mouth, it's going to kill you. <sighs> Silly buggers. Look. It's fine. Nothing at all to worry about. I may vomit. No, I'll be fine. But I'm not going to need to vape and I might need to get a drink. Other than that, it's fine. It's nothing to worry about. There's half a mil just gone down there. It does you no harm. Gives you a hell of a bloody throat hit though. <laughs> Nick ups are coming as well. I can feel it. <laughs> but while we're talking about juice, a while back um, I did a bit of an intro to juices for beginners so that you know what it is and because we're in January and because there'll be a lot of new viewers coming towards us I thought I'd play this in uh, and it tells you about the different substrates that are in the various different e-liquids you can get spot the haircut and uh, I think it's about six minutes this one enjoy Hello if you've just started on the e-cig route, you're probably wondering what all this talk about PEG and VG and PG and BM1 and BM2 
is all about. I'm going to try to explain that in relatively simple terms. The e-juice that you use, whether it's in a, a cartridge or in a pre-filled cart or, or whether it comes in a bottle for you to use in whatever device it is you want to use, they're all made out of the same kind of stuff. But there are three major constituents, if you like, the bits that actually make the vapour or cause the vapour to be visible. That's PG or propylene glycol, PEG or polyethylene glycol and VG or vegetable glycerin or just glycerin. Now all three of these have been used in the past in theatrical haze machines. The, the kind of smoke, if you want to call it that, that you see on stage or in discos and stuff like that. And they're generally recognised as being quite safe. They can irritate a little the air passages but otherwise they're safe but they've got three characteristics if you like three very different characteristics for how they perform let's start with PG propylene glycol that's what was in the first of the e-cigs and what was in the first of the juices that was given out um, it's quite thin it's quite runny not particularly viscous it is noticeable for good throat hit it does give you quite a bang um, or can give you quite a bang uh, a lot of people think if you want good throat hit you should use a PG juice um, VG or glycerin is very thick very viscous um, and it doesn't run very well quite at the other extreme from PG and it produces quite a thick vapour um, Generally speaking, the thicker the juice, the thicker the vapour. It's kind of a rule of thumb. It doesn't always apply, but it does in this case. And glycerin, as you get it, if you were to go to Boots and buy a bottle of glycerin, it is quite thick and runny, and in some cases, it won't wick awfully well. Um, it can, I won't say clog up, but it might not run as quickly as PG would. Uh, it is quite thick. PEG, polyethylene glycol, comes somewhere between the two. Um, it's, it's not quite as thick as glycerin, but it's nowhere near as runny as PG. Now, it produces very, very thick vapour, strangely enough, for something that's not as thick as glycerin. It actually produces a much denser vapour. And indeed, in the theatrical uh, smoke machines, haze machines, we, we use it quite a lot for creating a dense vapour that hangs around a long time. So that's worthwhile of note. Now obviously you can mix these things in various different quantities to give you various different effects. So with something like a 50-50 VG and PG juice, that's 50% glycerin, 50% propylene glycol, you put the two together and you kind of get a halfway house between thick vapour on one side and throat hit on the other side. And there's a lot of people that like uh, a 50-50 mix. If you mix PEG and glycerin, you get, again, another mix between the two. And that actually is, is a 50-50 mix of PEG and VG is my, my personal favourite. That gives me, I find, good throat hit. I'm not one for tearing the back of my throat out. It gives me really good vapour, um, produces really well on most devices. And it's, it's thin enough to wick well on most devices. Um, not the thinnest of juices by any manner of means, but it does work well. There is a third mix, which is PG and PEG, propylene glycol and polyethylene glycol. And again, that's much like a, a, a glycerin and PG mix, or VG, PG, and that will give you a halfway house between the two. Very good for throat hit, carries flavour well, produces good vapour. Not a bad mix at all. And with all of the juices that you see on the market, some will be pure PG, as far as you can do. Some will be pure glycerin, as far as you can do. Some will be pure, pure PG, and some will be a mix of various of them. And they're mixing various ratios to give you various kinds of experiences. Now, I don't think anybody can be prescriptive and say that any one is any better than any other. They're not. But by sampling a pure glycerin, a pure PG and a pure PEG, you'll be able to find out what the characteristics of each of those are 
and you can then decide what kind of mix might give you the experience that you're looking for. But in truth, um, I don't think there's any need to get hung up on it. Uh, I think you can choose a juice and try it. If you find the vapour isn't enough for you, the visible vapour that is, then go to something that's more VG or PEG heavy. If you think the vapour is too much for you, then go to something that's more PG heavy. I think that's the easiest rule of thumb. It's a difficult world to get involved in. Um, it's not one that you can be massively accurate about. And you will see uh, on all of the Vapor Trails programmes that we each use a different kind of mix. As I say, my favourite is a BM2, that's a PEG and VG mix. Other people like straight PG. My wife, for instance, just uses a straight PG mix. Uh, she, she doesn't have any of the super vapour jobs. She doesn't like blowing big clouds of vapour. Um, so there you go, just a very quick and rough and ready guide to the various different chemicals, for want of a better word, that go into the e-juice that you use. I'm David Dawn, for the Here's Hour, on me set A, ready for a nap. Back to me. And we're back live in the room. And while that was playing out, there were a few questions came up and we'll, we'll go through them. First one is, do I still use BM2? No, I don't. I don't use PEG in my juices now at all. Um, I'd finished the last of them off. And what I did find when I went to a 50-50 glycerin and propylene glycol mix, so that's PG and VG at 50-50, I wasn't getting the dry throats. Now I still do get a little bit of more uh, phlegm production, if you like, or, or mucus production uh, because of the glycerin. But other than that, that's become perfectly normal. And what I've also found is that the dry throats that I did get, cotton mouth if you want to call it that, that doesn't happen anymore. And what I also discovered was that the more uh, nicotine there was in a PEG mix, the drier it made your throat. So PEG, perfectly safe to use, and if you can get away with it, it's brilliant stuff, but it does tend to dry the throat, and I don't drink an awful lot unless I'm talking. And I don't talk a lot when I'm not on, on screen, do I, Chris? When you're sleeping. I do that a lot. That's when you're quiet. That's true. That, I can't argue with that. Yes. Um, Lena Marie Popper-Torsen has said... She is sure we prefer a moisture Dave to a dried up Dave. I'm mm. going to say right back at you, Lena Marie. Right back at you. <laughs> He's a bit of a prude to start with, Lena, isn't he? Prune? Me? <laughs> look at this face. Look at, look at the, I mean, the skin's gorgeous. Just go into that, look at that. It's gorgeous skin. Look, it's gorgeous. It's really nice. Mm -hmm. Yes. 100% VG, I also like. What were the other questions that were on there? Is propylene glycol safe? Yes. Propylene glycol, uh, sorry, polyethylene glycol 400. It was polyethylene glycol 400 or higher, 600 or 800, but nothing lower. Diethylene glycol, no. Definitely not, no. And ethylene glycol, not, no. Now, while we're on about it, you quite often see in uh, a lot of the anti's posts about antifreeze. Antifreeze? It's a, a big, big problem that many of the politicians out there don't know their ethylene glycols from their propylene glycols. And it's a bit of a a nightmare because ethylene glycol is antifreeze it's what's used in antifreeze and it is the killer that um, many many cats dogs are killed with during the year because people use them they don't go out to kill animals I'm not saying that I would never say that but what they do is they use antifreeze ethylene glycol in water features, which these days we've got more and more and more of. Yes. Now, we did put a, um, a fairly substantial petition into the government asking for 
the antifreeze that the U.S. uses, which is safe fur, lot safe fur, which contains propylene glycol, because as we all know, it doesn't freeze. Therefore, it has, you know, it can protect your vehicle, etc. Mm -hmm. But it's non-toxic because it doesn't have, as Dave has just shown us, that sweet taste that ethylene glycol has. And as a result is pleasant for children to drink and pleasant for pets. And it's one of the reasons I'm very up in arms that all their comments lately about the toxicity of um, the juice that we use, when they're quite happy to allow antifreeze to be in everybody's home. Well, yes, abs absolutely. Um, the, the, the bottom line on, on all of this is that, um, as Chris has just said, there is a, a in the States, I think all antifreezes are pretty much PG now. Mm -hmm. um, and they did that purely and simply because it's not toxic to certainly not to the extent that uh, that ethylene glycol or diethylene glycol are both of which are very sweet and that was what used to attract i mean you'd get um you know drips coming out of your radiator and dogs would lick it up especially in places like texas where there's short of water anyway um and that that would cause damage propylene glycol it does nothing they just poop more easily with propylene glycol I think I'm safe to say I shall be pooping more easily tomorrow <laughs> with that bit of e-liquid that I drank. But you'll notice, you'll notice I'm still sitting about and breathing. And I'm, I'll take my pulse. Hang on. Found it. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty and fifty, fifteen seconds. Eighty beats a minute in the middle of a shore. So you're all right. Right. That shows, it shows two things, shows two things. I must have had 24 milligrams of nicotine in one shot there because it was nearly a mill of it when I realised when I swallowed it. I wasn't counting the drops. I maybe should have done. Um, but with a, 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 a sat down rate of 80 beats per minute in the middle of a stressful shore, one, it hasn't raised me heart rate anything like you might have expected it to. Two, I'm not dead. I'm not even feeling nauseous. And in fact, I need a vape. I get in there. We'll take the adverts. Back in two minutes, go thou nowhere other than where thou art at. Aye. Do you know, we were sitting having a natter here and just, just reading what Mr. Scott Gregory had just typed into chat where he says, 
being dead is 100% safe because you can't get any deader as long as nobody else is in the room otherwise we'll have a do about passive deading <laughs> i like that he's right absolutely right but there was quite a serious point brought up during the course of the break which was that the eu and it, was it lal that brought it up liana it was lal yes that the eu is still working on this 30 to 60 milligrams being the lethal dose um what's what's the phrase i'm looking for bollocks Here's what I've done. I've spoken with Peter Hayek and Jacques Louezek, both of whom are experts on nicotine, and both of whom assure me and have assured everybody else that the lethal dose is closer to a thousand milligrams and probably over up to 1500 for a bloke on my side and possibly even more. So I have offered my services, and here is what I've offered to do. I will go to a place of their choosing. I will sit in a seat and get wired up, needles stuck in us, everything where, whatever it needs. However, electrodes round me head, they can tape, well, blonde nurses can tape electrodes to me gonads. They can do whatever they like, connect us up however they like. And I will take the EU's officially stated lethal dose in one go, orally, in the mouth, much as I did with that 24 milligrams earlier on. At their lower level, I'll take the 30 and then they can do all their little bits of testing and what have you. And we'll have a little bit rest until that's been excreted or whatever happens. And the other stuff's gone, by the way. Then I'll do the upper limit, they're 60. And then we'll go up in hundreds until such time as Jacques and Peter can get the information they need to say, hang on. You know, if we go another 200, you're a dead man. And I don't care how long it takes, I am prepared to go and do that. And, but, here's the thing. I want the bloody EU commissioner in the same room when I do this. And, when I've done it, I'm going to weigh the bugger down and do it to him. But I might forget to stop. Just to prove the point. Because this 60 milligrams is a load of hooey. Isn't it, Chris? Bleeding idiots. Absolutely. Which but it is, is worrying how they keep sticking to this and they won't budge no matter what information you give them. And, and, and sticking to this bloody idiotic idea that uh, a milligram of nicotine in juice is equivalent to one fag. I tell you what, it wouldn't surprise me if there was a study came out within the next few weeks that said if you want to get the same effect as a fag, you need 50 milligram juice. It wouldn't surprise us if that was to happen. Anyway, mm -hmm. we, we of course can do things about this, we can do things about this, um, and here's what we can do. I will be in Newcastle. Please, whichever one you go to, and do go to one, take your iPhone. Other smartphones are available. Take some video and let us have it. We need loads and loads of video. And on Thursday, I'm hoping we'll be having folks from various different areas 
just dropping in via Skype on uh, VT Talk just to fill us in on you know what they think is going to be happening, numbers that are going to be there and stuff like that, and we'll be covering it in more detail then. We did say on the on the tease um, for the show that we're going to be talking about atomizers, and again, this is just so that beginners will get to know what's what, and I think it runs about eight minutes. We might go slightly over, Chris. Okay. Is that all right? Yeah, I'll forgive you this time. I've got to be careful. I've got to be mm -hmm. careful. Um, right, here we go with this little bit of video. Um, and I might log into chat while this is going on. This is about at ease. It's what we we'll had to put up with. You don't know how good you've got it these days. So, atomizers. Yes. Two basic types, tubed and exposed. Um, let's start at the oldest one of all of these, which is probably the 801, where a lot of us started. As you can see, if I put my finger beside it, it's quite big. We've got two here, a black one and a white one. Now, these originally were designed to be used on the first, what was called pen style e-cig. And this is the cartridge that you used with it. It held around about a milliliter of liquid and as you can see in this center part was full of propylene wool or whatever it was that they used to hold the liquid. They were well well renowned for being leaky, very airy draw but full and full of flavor, really full of flavor. Um, the anatomy of these is, is quite straightforward. It's simply a connector, recessed as you can see. Um, somewhat reminiscent actually of an Ego style atomizer that you would buy these days. And that would screw onto a battery that looked a bit like the body of a pen, I suppose. The cartridge would go in and contact the little bridge that you can see down there. That would pass the liquid onto the coil and there you go, that's your 801 atomizer, as ever was. Airy, full of flavour, not a fat lot of vapour, and we'll see if we can get them fired up back in the studio. So let's move the older versions out and show you a new version of an 801. This is the Icon Vape 801, um, available from Safer Sigs in the UK. And this is a whole different kettle of fish in comparison to the older 801s. Uh, on here we have a, an 801 drip tip, we'll take that off for the moment. And you'll be able to see in much better detail the bridge with the steel mesh on, covering the coil. And that's quite a large coil that's in there. So that's the 801. Now, got to remember that the thread on the 801 is what you would call an 801 thread and that will not fit on the standard thread these days the 510 which brings us to the 510 this is a 510 as you can see exposed thread the thread that everybody is used to the same thread that's used on an ego um, on all of the 510s style um, e-cigs that you see um, that's the actual threaded bit there. That's the bit that fits everything. That's what everybody calls a 510. So cartomizers with a 510 on, that's the 510 thread. And again, it's a tubular atomizer. And again, as you can see inside, we have the bridge um, that carries the juice from the inside of the cartridge. And so here is a cartridge that would fit both the 901 and the 510. As you can see, little piece of plastic to prevent anything from leaking, never did. And that would fit straight in there. Capacity, less than half a mil. And as you can see, that's, that's just a leak looking for somewhere to happen. And quite often did. So that's your 510. Um, became very, very popular for producing masses of vapor, um, specifically on the likes of the Titan. And basically the 510 was a 2.3 ohm device. The 801 that we looked at earlier 
was a 3 or a 3.5 ohm device and really needed higher power to get the best out of it. So, as you can see, exposed thread on the 510, but on the 901, the thread again is recessed, not unlike the 801. I don't think there's any significance in the numbers, there may be, but again, a tube, and as you can see, similar sort of construction inside. You would think only the thread was different, but that wasn't actually the case. The 901, and this is specifically a 901 cartridge, but was famed for its flavour. Um, and I, 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 I particularly liked 901s. Uh, the flavour of a 901 was good. But one of the drawbacks, and it's probably not too easily seen on here, is that the 901 here, just under my thumbnail, has a little air hole and that used to let the juice flow out at quite a rate of knots. Always did, um, probably always will, no matter what you do, but still a very, very flavorful atomizer. So those are all the tubed atomizers, but what's happened to the 306, I hear you cry. Well, let's move these out of the way and bring in these two here. On the right, a 306 on the left a 401 now the 306 because of the way these things are put together I'll have to screw it into something to take its mouthpiece off and this is a bridgeless version which I can now unscrew no I can't actually this is a bridgeless version you'll see there's no bridge on this it's a Cisco 306 um, and Brilliant for vapour, brilliant for flavour, uh, an all-round good atomizer. Pretty much the same as this, which is a 401, and I'm definitely going to need a cloth to get this to bits, because the top, there we go, and that's the construction of the 401. Again, exposed bridge, no tube around it, um, quite a thick collar on it, and again, a recessed connector. Um, in actual fact, the recessed connector is the 510 connector the other way on. So if I was to take this 510 and this 401, you would find that the two would screw together quite nicely. Um, so the 401 used 510 fittings the other way on, on the other hand. Brilliant flavour out of the 401, brilliant flavour out of the 306. Vapor production, again, these were quite high resistance or what was called standard resistance around about the three ohms mark. They needed a little bit more power to get the best out of them. Quite long lived, very flavorful, lovely vapor when you had them working to their best. Um, these are just some of the atomizers that we used to use. Next time, we'll look at cartomizers and see what the different versions of cartomizers are. And then after that, We'll look at all the various different things that will fit onto your Ego style battery. But these are the atomizers we started with. That was a blast from the past, wasn't it? Yeah, but highly relevant where it comes to uh, what you talked about before, juice in the mouth. Yes. Oh, God, yes. Because people don't understand that. You know, when a, um, you hear a an e-cig, an atomizer pop and that explosion would sort of happen in your mouth in those days. Yes. Now? No. I can't remember the last time I used an e-cig and actually got juice in the mouth. Um, I'm gonna be, I'm gonna have to be very careful how I phrase this. <laughs> I can't remember last time I got juice in the mouth other than putting it there on purpose. Mm. And you can take that any way you like, gentle viewer. It matters little to me. <laughs> um, and as Liana's just said in chat there, she says, I still use an atomizer for dripping new juices. Yes, I, I admit I do too. Yes. The 306 is the one that's still sort of used quite a lot. It, you it, know? It's, the, it's the benchmark for flavor, isn't it, the 306? Mm -hmm. Was always the benchmark for flavor. And, and 
you know, I've still got a few in the uh, in the big wooden box. It's all good stuff. All good mm -hmm. stuff. Um, do you know what? I've thoroughly enjoyed being back here on a Monday night. He said, changing the subject away, having had a look at the clock. Yes. Um, it's it's it ran away with us, hasn't it? it? It's just stuttered by. It's been absolutely fabulous. So every week, I'm going to be looking for a tweet of the week, aren't we? We are Twitter of the week, and we want people to uh, get into the forums. We've added a couple of new um, sections in there. In the Vapor Trails forum, you'll find a link above the video screen on this page. Um, get yourself in there and get posted as well. And we want some ideas mm -hmm. what you want to hear, new people especially, what you want to know about, what you want to learn about. And we're going to talk about it, aren't we, Dave? We are indeed, yes, absolutely. I mean, this, this is your show. Bottom line, it's your show. Hence the challenge, Dave. You, if, you, if you want to see a coil made live, and the chances are I'll make a bot of it, then fine. Let me know what the coil is. Tell, show me how, you know, let me know how to, uh, how to make it. Show me where I can find out. I'll do that live. I'll even, I, I got it ready just in case, but I've got the gear here to mix up the um, caramel lychee. But I'll do that next week. I'll mix up caramel lychee live. I'll show you how I do it. There is no recipe. It's all done by eye. Because I'm not worried at all about the toxicity of e-juice. And close enough is what I work for. So we'll do that next week. And for next week, I haven't showed you these yet, have I, Chris? No. I'll go to closey up, you can. And put that there. Whoops. Look, he's been shopping, people. I've been shopping. And I'll put that there. That's what we've uh -huh. got. Ah. Ah, ha, ha. That it's, doing, it's me and the crochet started all this, you know. Crocheting, yeah, crocheting. Yes, this is it's cotton string, cotton. Well, actually, it's cotton wool. It's double knitting. Oh, Get it right. Does that make a cotton wool? No. Right. So that's that's nice. That's nice for wiki stuff. And this is like a stock of net. So I'm going to be having a play with that with wicks in the likes of the squip. And that'll be coming up um, in the next week or two. So that's that's something to look forward to. Um, but yes, keep the challenges coming in. Tweet them at me, and I'll I'll see by the retweets and and likes and various other things what kind of demand there is. We'll have a blast. <laughs> what now? What you're laughing at? What's happened? Uh, Moonlit's challenged you to knit a coil. <laughs> I like it. Hang on! <coughs> <laughs> no. Knit it. Uh, honestly. Isn't that terrible? Isn't that terrible? Where did I get it from? Hobbycraft. You know these big superstores? You go to the knitting scent section of Hobbycraft, the superstore, and that's where you'll find it. Find it. I think it was about four quid a ball. Four I mean, Christ, you know... You could wick something the size of Drax B with that. Yeah, EB will have it. Um, be all over everywhere. There'll be little wool shops all over the place that will have it. So, so. Do, what, do what I did. Go in and say, excuse me, have you got any cotton wool? And she says, do you mean knitting cotton? I said, yes, I think. And they have the two sizes. Because there was a young man from De Devizes whose balls were of different sizes. The one was so small, it was no ball at all, but the other one, several prices. <laughs> Say goodnight, Mr. Dawn. Good night, Mr. Dawn. <laughs> Thanks for watching, everybody. Uh, I'll see you again on Thursday for VT Talk, but tune in tomorrow night for Marco van Basten with Vapor Scene and then DE Talk, our German language programme, on Wednesday night, the team will be with you for the first Team Talk of 2014. As I say, VT Talk on Thursday night and then Sunday night for Dave's Tackle Box. Every night this week, there's also RY4 Radio. There's already a link in chat. Get over there. Boogie on down, reggae woman. But until I see you next time, don't forget, vape on, vape hard, 
and don't let the bastards grind you down. Till we see you next time. Nine night from me and nine night from Chris. Nine night. Bye.